Hello. So I hope you're all managing to stay safe and you're all staying at home wherever you are. So the props for the next video are taking ages to build. But I thought in the meantime, what better thing to do whilst I'm trapped at home watching liquid latex dry than to make a Q&A video. So to help me with the Q&A, I'd like to introduce Quentin Questions. Hi, that's me, Quentin Question. Oh, plenty of questions for you to answer. He's the best in the business at reading out Q&A questions. Aren't you, Quentin? Oh, so many questions. So how has the virus affected you, Quentin? I can't get the virus because I'm uh, smart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how about the lockdown? How are you feeling about the lockdown? Well, the lockdown hasn't affected me much day to day as my movements are mostly static. Yeah, I suppose, but hasn't changed for you much. Would you like some questions? Ah, yes. Yes, please. Question one. Oh, can I have my skin back? No. I mean, I haven't seen your skin. What skin? Awesome rejected ideas that you have had. So I've got loads of sketchbooks full of old characters and ideas and it's not so much that they've been rejected, they just uh, at the time never got me excited enough or they weren't really achievable. That being said, when I do go back through these sketchbooks and find the odd character or joke that I do like, I'll cannibalise them and drop them into new sketch ideas so it's not as if they're always put on the shelf. However, here are some fantastic classic Will McD characters from my sketchbook that never saw the light of day. <laughs> Look at me foxy orders. <laughs> Classic. I've actually got a sketch that I finished editing and just decided it wasn't good enough to make live in the end. I think I've only done that once. The sketch is actually an advert for Will's Cereal Castle, which I play a cereal salesman called Will One Big Tooth McDaniel. Where I basically just list a load of zany cereals. Jimmy's Golden Twats. Abusive Porridge. My Creamy Thighs. Actual Poop. You get the idea. I mean, watching it back, some of the jokes did still make me chuckle, but I think I'd just been watching the Interdimensional Cable episode of Rick and Morty with Anthony Eyes Johnson on it and thought, I know, I'm gonna just rip this off and be nowhere near as funny as Justin Roiland or Dan Harmon, and I think this one's gonna stay on my hard drive forever. Did you always want to do YouTube, or did you plan another job? So YouTube was my hobby for a very long time, but recently I've been lucky enough to call it my full-time job. I did actually go to uni to study architecture, and did that for a few years before doing YouTube full-time which is awesome. What got you into making these cars and videos? So I used to make loads of silly films with my friends when I was younger. Ah, I've been eaten by a fox. Oh my So I've actually been making videos for like 20 years. But then when I went to uni, one of my tutors encouraged me to incorporate video into one of my design projects. She actually recommended that I watch the film Videodrome by David Cronenberg. Now any of you that have actually seen Videodrome can imagine how I absolutely love that film. So then I made a project inspired by it where the main character became obsessed with a GameCube controller like the lead character of Videodrome became obsessed with the show and the VHS. And I made this weird stop motion of a GameCube controller coming to life. So I think, thanks to that tutor, this was the first time I ever used liquid latex and my lifelong love affair began. Why do you put your creations once you're done with them? So I keep them in my box of nightmares. Although over time my box of nightmares has become two boxes of nightmares and some bags of nightmares. I have a lot of puppets. What made you think Earth was a good planet to land on? Well, your planet has cocker spaniels, metal music, pizza, and Nintendo. I, I mean, our planet, fellow human. What was your favourite horror movie and why? That's a good question. And a tough one. I mean, I have an immense love for Alien and John Carpenter's version of The Thing. I think Alien was the first ever horror film I watched. I remember borrowing a VHS copy off a friend that had been taped off the TV because I am well old. 
I don't think I ever gave it back. I remember being far too young to watch it and hiding behind a cushion for the whole thing, but also loving every second of it. It was like an awakening. It wasn't then until a few years later that I actually watched the thing, but I just instantly fell in love with the monster designs and the practical effects. So in terms of modern day horror films, I loved It Follows and Hereditary. I'm not really a massive fan of jump scare horror films. I prefer it when it's just like uncomfortable and tense throughout. And those two films are just masterclasses in creating that feeling, especially It Follows. I mean, you just find yourself watching every single corner of the frame for movement. It just keeps you on the edge of your seat throughout the whole film. Watch It Follows. But I do still love a good modern day monster horror film with juicy practical effects. I recently rewatched The Void, which is a nice cosmic horror with plenty of practical juicy monster effects and you should definitely watch it if you like juicy monster practical monster effects. Hey, would you want to be a horror director? And how did you find your art style? Yes, absolutely. I would love to make a horror film. I had some ideas for horror shorts and I was going to try and film one this summer, but that's obviously been postponed for now, but I will do it eventually. Not sure where I'd put it though. I don't know if a full on horror film would work on my channel or not. And in regards to finding my art style, as I mentioned, I absolutely love 80s horror films like The Thing, Alien, anything by David Cronenberg, such as The Fly, Videodrome, uh, anything worked on by Rob Bottin. And of of course, The Mighty Boosh. I mean, they're a massive influence on my art style, as you can probably gather. And although, obviously, I'm a bit of a poor imitation of any of these films or artists, I like to draw little bits of inspiration from all of them and combine them into my own, hopefully, unique style. Have your parents seen any of your videos, and if so, what were their reactions? Yeah, they watch all of them. And they check the views on them daily. At any given time, they seem to know how one of my videos is performing better than I do. And they show them to everyone they can. I went into a builder's merchant the other day, and one of the guys in there said he recognised me from one of the weird videos my dad had shown him. I mean, obviously my parents appreciate how goddamn weird my videos are, but it's still really nice. And also, my mum's favourite video of mine is Tapeworm Terry. The video where I have an overgrown tapeworm growing out of my ass. That's her favourite video of mine. And I like that. What is your greatest? Okay, my favourite creation you have made. So, my favourite creation is, of course, the breakup buddy. I just love this little dude. At the time, he was the most complex thing I'd ever created, and I still just love the simplicity of his design. Although, he's starting to fall apart a little bit now, because the latex just rots. Although, I think the current monster I'm working on might rival him. What creature is the hardest to make, and how long does it take this build? So the hardest monster I've ever worked on might also be the one I'm currently working on now. Bad the ones you've seen, uh, maybe the breakup buddy or the genie of the flaps. Uh, he was quite a big undertaking, mainly because of his size in all of those flaps. Do Melvin get excited and find in love? Yes, I'm happy to say Melvin did find love. He's met someone who's part human, part connects Ferris wheel set, and they've recently moved in together. Why did you always struggle for a hot video ideas and cut my motivations? I personally find that if I get stuck on a script or an idea, I just have to move away from it and leave it and maybe come back to it later. For me, if a script isn't exciting me enough to make me feel creative and finish it, then it's either not the right idea for me or it just isn't good enough. I always find there's no point in forcing yourself to be creative on a project, just step back and move away from it for a bit. Try something else. I have most of my ideas when I'm daydreaming whilst walking the dog or doing DIY or something. And in terms of motivation, I always want to be working on something and I don't know if it's a healthy mindset but I always beat myself up if I'm not working on something so I don't struggle with motivation if it's the right idea because if I'm not working on a project then I'm struggling more that's how I personally know the idea is poop if I can't get motivated to do it then it's just not the right idea that's just me and that's not to say you should give up on every single idea as soon as you get the smallest bit of writer's block I find it's always good to note down ideas and keep them somewhere so you can always come back to them later it's just for me if I'm not getting excited over a project I just need to remove myself from it <laughs> It's not too bad initially because most people are interested in the idea of YouTube full time. I mean, people ask you questions about it and it's not until they've gone away and they've seen my channel and then I see them the next time then it's slightly more awkward. I mean, I do tell them originally my stuff is weird, but they kind of laugh it off. They, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But they learn. They learn. But yeah, I genuinely can't think of a time where someone's been actually weird or awkward about my channel. Even if they admit it's maybe not their cup of tea or it's a bit weird for them, they're still really nice about it. Everyone's just been really supportive and happy for me, which is great. So that's it for the Q&A. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, then let me know in the comments and I'll do another one of these sometime. So I just wanted to say thank you to my newest patrons for supporting this video. So if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a platform where you can pledge a small amount to support me every time I release a video. And it helps me to pay for props and new equipment 
development and various things. And I appreciate this is a difficult time for everyone, so asking for money feels a bit gross, but I just wanted to say thank you to those people who do support me and it really does help out my channel and my videos and allow me to keep making this stuff in this turbulent time. Anyway, their names are Terence Clark, Emily Callaway, John, M. Clausen, Golden Ben Bear, Nicholas Baumgartner. Not an interesting username at all. Miranda. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> <coughs> Gross. Yeeta Boy, Matthew McKenzie, Malaysia Cardona, Chloe Hale, Mark Holdcroft, and David Taylor. So like I say, thanks for supporting my videos. It really does help me out. Uh, and if you're able to and you want to, then head on over to my Patreon page and you get rewards for pledging, such as behind the scenes video blogs, access to special prop giveaways and credits and various other bits and bobs. So anyway, thank you. Okay, bye.